Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity and today Alina Craft and we're going to do those topography frames. Now there are four of them and I am going to be cutting them apart as soon as I can open the package. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good start isn't it? Right, so I'm getting them out of the package. There they are. So I'm just going to pop them off. Let's see how easy these are to manipulate. They, they're very easy to manipulate. There's plenty of space there to uh, get your snips in. And let's just cut those apart. Now, what I'm doing is I'm cutting to the outside edge so that I can pull back from the inner edge. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So that you end up with a clean finish. There you go. That one's nice. And then this one. See that bit that you've got there? When you cut it, always take it down and away from your cut edge. So that it doesn't pierce little holes in your paper. So that's kind of like the reason for that. And then I'm going to cut close down on there. See if I've got anything on the inside. Can you see that bit there? I don't know how close it's going to go, but there's a tiny little bit there, but I'm just going to go in there if I can see it, because, of course, you can see more than me. No, I can't see it. I'll get that one, and I'm just bending it down away from the, uh, the cut, the blade section of the die. Right, I'm going to cut those apart. And I've already cut myself watercolour cardstock and I've got five pieces that I've cut here and these are five and a half by four inches. I'm going to be using uh, Alina Craft's Peony Stamp and the fifth one is going to be solid. So that's going to be my base. She says sticking it down onto cardstock that's got tape on it. And these four will have, because you can see there's four frames here, um, they will be centred up and cut through. But first of all, what I need to do with my cardstock is stamp it. So I'm just going to move some of these things out of the way because I'm not going to die cut until I have stamped. Right, I'm going to, first of all, be prepared and put down my scruffy mat so hopefully you can see that i've got my um surprise creation stamp platform because i need to be able to stamp accurately i'm going to be using a lena craft stamp block because it's just a great sort of palette for mixing stuff on as well as for stamping a water brush from aliexpress and i'm going to be using four tombow markers Oh, that's not a bad picture, is it? And if I can see the colours on here, it's 158, 942, so we're going to be using those, 723, 133, and 817. So those are the Tombow colours that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using Rangers Archival Ink because it is waterproof. Right, so I need to get my stamp in the platform and also a sheet of cardstock. Now all of these are going to be butted up to the corner and stamped in the exact same spot. So whatever stack platform that you've got, just butt it right up into the corner. Uh, I'm just looking at my stamp here, deciding which way around it goes. Right, it goes this way. And I'm just going to fit it in, try and do it evenly. And it should just cover that sheet of cardstock. Right, so now I know, once this is loaded up, it's going to stamp every piece of cardstock that I put in here in the exact same place. Right. Get some ink on here. And then I'll stamp the other five up um, off camera. It's really hard to, uh, 
to ink up a stamp in my little space, I have to say. <laughs> and I keep saying I'm going to do my craft room, and then when I get to it, um, I'm doing another project and uh, taking everything out. But one of the things I have done is I've got all my wooden stamps um, stored in boxes, and that really annoys me sometimes because there's a certain stamp I want and I can't find it. And I used to have them all out on a shelf, displayed like ornaments, because I just love the artwork of stamps. But, you know, now they're in a box, I can't find them. So I know that I do need to sort myself out at some point. Right, make sure your cardstock is butt up in the corner again. This is a great stamp platform, but it's not magnetic. So bear that in mind. I hope that I've got ink all over that stamp. Just going to close the lid and I'm going to apply some pressure. Now I have got a stamp tool actually and I don't know why I'm not using it. It's another one of those things, isn't it? You just forget. It's like me and my bone folder. Right, let's have a look. Nope. I'm just going to get it actually. Here we go. Let's use that and see what difference it makes. Now we are stamping onto watercolour cardstock and it does have a grain uh, in it. So sometimes you might have to stamp two or three times to be able to get down into all those little places that you get on watercolour cardstock. Now there it is, but you know, I still think it's a little fading in some places and I can see where those places are. So it could be that I've just got to ink my stamp up once again until I get a good image. But we'll, we'll have a look. I'll try concentrating in those areas. Yeah, I'm going to stamp it up again just in, in the, uh, the centre. I think it needs it. So I'm just going to apply some ink into that area. Make sure my paper's all the way up in the edge again. I don't know if this is shaking my camera. I'm going to try and get it mounted onto the wall so that no matter what goes on on the table, uh, the camera will stay sturdy. Let's have a look now. Right, that is a lot better. I'm missing a bit down here. And I don't think I actually inked that bit up. I'm about to find out. Yeah, I mean, that is a huge improvement, but I think I do need to put some ink down at the bottom end. I'm just going to rub my pad on that section. See if that does it. Make sure cardstock is correct again. There we go. As I said, you know, watercolour cardstock, notoriously difficult if it's textured. There we go. That's a lot better. I'll move it up so that you can see the whole thing. Right. I am now going to stamp my other four pieces and I will be back. Right. So I've now got four sheets of cardstock that are stamped exactly the same. And my back piece I'm leaving plain uh, because I think I might put some blue back there and I've also cut apart all of my frames and I'm going to be positioning each one um, in right so I've now got four sheets of cardstock that are stamped exactly the same and my back piece I'm leaving plain uh, because I think I might put some blue back there and I've also cut apart all of my frames and I'm going to be positioning each one um, in a different area. I think I might try to go sort of like more to the top, uh, leaving a space at the bottom um, if I want to put a sentiment. Or I could just cut it, you know, straight through the centre. It doesn't really bother me. But you can see how much of that stamped image um, is going to vanish so, you know, you're only going to get the outsides of it 
and then it will drop down on the next one and it will become wider and wider towards the base. So it could be that I have that one as the base and then just have a blue top. I haven't decided yet. Well, let's go away and cut them and find out. Right, so I've done all that. And what you have to remember when you're doing this is that um, you're cutting out most of the image that you stamp. So I've actually decided I'm leaving one base plane and the largest piece that came out of the top I'm going to put down there and what I will do is try and line it up as I go so that I'm creating layers and you can see all of the different holes. Now, what is apparent, of course, is that you've got all of that and you've got all of that texture, but there's no defining outline. So I'm going to do something about that. And um, I've got black soot here. And if I go just into the edges remembering I'm going to watercolor as well so some of this might even um, get blended back up into it because to me it seems pretty pointless to go through all the effort of cutting those frames if you um, if you can't see them so a little bit of black salt or whichever edge of color um, if you do this that you decide to use um, it's just going to make it show up a lot better like that. Now I can see my edges. Right. And I will be doing that on all of the others. But first of all, let's go in and um, let's do this piece first, actually, uh, before the frames, because this is the piece that's going to kind of like show through the very base uh, of it. So it's quite important now, I am going to go in, I think, with my, my lightest pink, which is this one. And I'm just going to scribble a bit down onto the block. And then I've got a little bit of water, because you never know how much depth or colour or anything that you want in anything. And just go in and find out where all of my pink bits are going to be. And then I can start to change the shade of them by using all of the darker colours going in towards the centre. But there's a bit of green in here, so I'm trying to kind of remember where that is. And, of course, any gaps, um, I want to be able to put, I think, blue into those. So this area here is pretty much pink. I can see there's some green there. And I've got a bunch of green leaves here. So I'm just focusing just on my pale pink bits at the moment. And if I look at the, um, the actual stamp image... There it is. Uh, I think that's going to make life a little bit easier. So I can definitely see where there's green. A lot of this area here is green. This is pink. So I'm just picking a little bit more up there. All of this is green. And then this bit here is pink. That's where one of the blossoms actually drops down. And then looking up here, um, I've got an area that if I want to put blue into it, it's definitely going to be blue. But I think that's it on that pink area. So it's really useful, you know, to kind of refer back to um, your stamp picture just so that you can see where you're going. So I've done the pale pink there, and this may seem a little bit, you know, backwards to what I should be doing. I'm just going to clean that because I want to do my green bit next. And I'm going to use my lightest colour of green. I'm just going to clean that off. Just so that I can see the area of my flowers. As I say, I can put all of my darker bits in after. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of water again and go in and pick that up. 
and then it becomes quite surprising just to see how much green is actually in this image. All of this area up here is green. And then all of this is green. And that's green. I can see the, um, the leaves there. And that's a definite leaf. And I know that this one is. Now these are bits that I may not even see once they get covered up with the frame, but it's just nice to have a reference when you start working to your outer pieces, which is where all of those are. And it becomes um, a lot easier to colour, and I'll show you why. Because um, even though I haven't put my other shades of pink into there, if I just take this one as an example and lay it down, I can now see where I need to put the colours for the top frame. So it becomes really easy to do that. And I can see my green bit will go there and it will also go there. And then, you know, you just start going outside of your frame and then placing your other one underneath will show you where that bit needs to go. I do need some more here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on colouring in this bit and I will be back. Right, so I've done that and as you can see, you know, it's just like colouring in your whole image. Except when you take that away, of course, you've got your aperture and this piece is going to be going down here on the, uh, on the base. And then all of the other ones are going to be sitting on top. And like I said, I'm going to use my black soot to, um, that's the wrong one, isn't it? That's the right one to give it definition so that all of those layers um, are going to show up as you go down through it kind of thing. So I'm going to show you um, now what I do to put a darker second layer. And that is, I'm just going to put this one back on top again because then you kind of like killing two birds with one stone. That's a nice saying, isn't it? Um, and using the same pens but this time without any water and just going in and tracking and finding where all those shadow points are and um, popping them in there. Now this may look very sketchy but then we're going to brush them out with water in a minute and that will soften them into the rest of it. So I'm just kind of like just tickling around where I think there's going to be some shadow and just go with it. And then I'm going to put some water in with my water brush and make sure your brush is wet. And then you can just start to push that out and it will blend in. Just have to squeeze it round and round and round and it'll move. And it also travels with the water as it's drying. So I've got a little bit more, squeeze some more water out there. Didn't really want to oversaturate because I do want it to dry at some point today. And just keep going until you've blended it. And you've got no harsh lines. So I'm going to carry on uh, colouring and I will be back. Right, so that's enough colouring for me. And I've decided that I want to put some blue in there. This is a really pale blue and it's a 451. So let's have a look and see what kind of difference this is going to make to it. It's probably not very strong uh, going in there, so I'm going to try it straight from the marker. Sometimes you have to be brave. Oh, that's better. 
a lot more colour and depth. I just thought that it needed something, you know, behind there to um, to kind of make things come forward. And you can, of course, go in with your water brush afterwards and uh, create a much more uh, watercolour appearance. And uh, I'll show you. I think my brush is still wet. And then you can manipulate some of that colour around. But I just think it gives it a nice touch to have that blue. It's kind of like a China blue blue. Right, I'll be back in a minute. So I've got some blue in and I just think that lifts the pink a lot better. Um, you know, gives it a, a much happier appearance. Now, I've used that to be able to colour in my top section um, and now it's a template for all of my other things. So when I go in with my bottom base, I can see where I need to colour. And I don't need to colour everything because you can see exactly how much space we've got going on there. So that bit then is really quick to do. Do you see? If I stick them all together... Obviously, I'm going to line the bottom one up. You can see that there's like only a quarter of an inch of colouring all the way around. So what I will do now is take this piece, marry it up to that piece. If I've got that right. Well, I think you get what I mean. I'm going to be marrying it up to that piece there. And then it becomes really easy to colour in each section as I lay it down. And then the whole thing will become one picture, except I'm going to put ink around here. So I'm just going to go colour in my little half inch bits and show you what I did and I'll be back. Right, so there's the second layer. And as you can see, it's lined up and I'm going to use black soot around that one as well so that it's defining each layer as I go. Now the next layer down is, get the correct one, is this one and that will be lined up and that one will be coloured so I'll be right back. Right so I've completed painting all of those layers and as you go through them uh, you can basically see how how much colouring you're actually doing towards the end of it. Do you know what I mean? And then it's just a matter of lining everything up. Now, what I intend to do, I think that's the next one. No, that would actually go on to there. What I intend to do is do my base piece first by lining it up with this one. So I need to get those level. And if you find that your stamping has been a little bit off, it doesn't really matter because you can just go in and crop it off. So if I slot that piece into there, I'm basically going to know where that's going. And I'm just going to glue the back of this one. And I'm going to be using a Lena Crafts foam tape to do the other layers because... There's not much point in using a topography dye if you don't have, uh, you know, those layers. So let's line this up with the base. Make sure that I've got that on. And as I said, if you're a little bit off, you can just go into your guillotine and uh, trim bits off afterwards. Right, so I'm going to push that down. I can lift that one up now because now I know where the back is in relation to everything else. I do apologise if my camera's going blurred. I do want that stuck down nicely. And 
And then what I'm going to be doing is using foam tape, which is Alina's, um, all the way around each of my layers, and I'll be right back. Right, so I just quickly wanted to show you what I'm doing here, and that is I'm basically building a tray so that the next layer that goes on is the smallest layer, and that will go on top there. And that's basically how I'm going to be building it up on top of foam like that. So you can see. Right, I'll be back in a minute. I've got some seriously weird stuff going on with my camera. Well, anyway, what I decided to do was foam at the base and put one, and then I glued one, and then I put foam, and now I want to glue this one because I decided otherwise um, it was just going to be too thick. So I'm just going to glue all around the edge on this one, and I hope I'm still in focus. Put my finger down there. And I always kind of like try to remember that glue squishes. So I never really go right up to the edge. Now, the whole point of this card now is to make sure your design is married up. I'm looking at this little stem here and I'm just going to wiggle it up slightly and then it's got to go over I think that's it I'll pick it up I'm hoping you can see you've got all of those layers going on there I think that would make a really great book cover actually and it makes a really nice, interesting card because you can feel all of those bits and it just feels really great. Right, so that is what I have got for you today. I do hope that you have an absolutely awesome weekend and I am going to be up on Monday with a surprise creation design team haul. And I've already seen that and I can tell you that it's very cute. But anyway, have a wonderful weekend and as usual, all links below. Bye.